thanks for watching this tutorial. Um, the goal of this video is to show you how to build your own flight booking engine. The video is a complement to the blog article in which uh, we explain to you the different structure, the different APIs you have to combine to offer flight booking, flight search and flight booking capabilities to your users to add to your application. And the video is that will actually show you concretely how you can combine the different APIs to be able to book a flight and to sell flight tickets to your customers. For the purpose of the video, I'm going to use Passman uh, to be able to use the different APIs. I'm going to use the Amadeus for Developers collection. Um, you can actually download it. We published it. I will add a link uh, into the blog article if you want to download and get access to all the APIs. So, to be able to build a flight booking engine, the first thing, the first feature you have to offer to our users is actually flight search. So they're able to search uh, out of all the airlines we are providing. So for that, we publish an API named Flight Offer Search. Uh, we actually publish two different flavors of this API. We have a simpler version, which is a GET version, that is extremely easy and fast to integrate and offers uh, a list of parameters, but not all the different filtering and parameters you can think about. So it's good enough if you want to integrate and do simple flight searches, it's actually very easy. But we offer as well a post version of the same API, which is the uh, on steroid version, in which you get access to the complete list of different parameters to really customize your requests. So you're ready, you integrate the flight offer search, uh, your users are able to look for flights, they're going to have a list of different flights for different origin destinations, and then they're going to start browsing and take time to select the one they want. And let's say they take 20, 30 minutes to, to compare the different prices and different offers to select the one they are interested about. And after that, they want to book, they want to book the one they selected. But because they waited, they took 30, 40 minutes to select the flight they want, a few things could have happened uh, during that time. The price could have changed. 30 minutes, 40 minutes is actually quite a long time when you look for flight tickets and the price is changing all the time. So first thing, maybe the price is different. Second thing is the availability in this flight. Maybe before they had only one or two seats available and they are not available anymore. So to make sure you confirm the price and the availability before offering the booking to your customers, we have created an API named Flight Offers Price. The purpose of this API is to pass as a parameter the flight offer you selected from the flight search or the list of flight offers. And the API is going to revalidate the price and the availability. And if the price changed, it will inform you so you can inform your users before moving to the booking part. And the next step that uh, you did that is actually doing the flight booking. So booking the, the flight or the list of flights you have selected. This is what I'm going to show you right now, is how to combine those three APIs so you can actually build your, your solution. So the first one we said is Flight Offer Search. As I said before, it comes with two different flavors, the GET version and the POST version. For the sake, for the sake of, uh, of the demo, for the purpose of the demo, we're going to use the very simple one, which is the GET. It will be perfect uh, to, for, for the demo. We're going to look for flight from London to uh, San Francisco, for example. We're going to look for only uh, direct flights uh, one way. We're not, going to look for, we're not going to look for return. So it's going to make the response a bit shorter, a bit simpler. We're looking for one adjunct only. And the max parameter here is just to tell the API that I want a maximum of three flight offers. It could go up to 250. But once again, to make it more simpler, we're going to use only a maximum of three. So here we're searching out of the list of all the airlines we have. And we get a response. Uh, let me take a few minutes to actually explain to you how the response is built. It can be interesting for you. Um, the first one is the meta part. The meta part is the metadata we are providing uh, for this response. Here you can see the number of flight offers we're providing. So here, once again, count three because the maximum we asked to the API is three. The link here, the self link here, is used if you want to reproduce the exact same API call in the future from the response. Okay, this is the meta part. The second interesting part is the dictionaries. We decided to put in the dictionaries the data uh, for, that can be repetitive in the response, and we want to provide you more information. A very simple example of the aircraft number. So for each flight, we're going to tell you which aircraft we're going to use, but instead of, because the same aircraft are used over and over in the same response, so instead of putting always 
all the description, we just put a number and you can find in the dictionary more information. Same for the different carrier, you can see TK is the Turkish airline because we're going to have many flights using Turkish airline, I'll tap for Portugal. This is the dictionary part. And now the interesting part, I mean, all the data are in the data part. So let me just do that before getting into detail. So here you can see we have one, two, and three. This is basically three different flight offers, once again, because we ask for a maximum of three. So what do you get? What's, what is the flight offer? So a flight offer comes with some high level information, such as the source of data, such as the number of uh, bookable seats, for example. And then you have the itineraries. Itineraries are actually the list of flights you, you're going to take for one flight offer. So here, because we are looking for the... We didn't say that we wanted to have a direct flight, for example, uh, from London to San Francisco. We just said, return to me all the flights from London to San Francisco. And the API, by default, is looking for the cheapest ones. So here, it seems that we have a stop, which makes the flight cheaper. So the duration here is the total duration of the, the, the flight, uh, of the two different or three different flights with the, with the stops. Mm -hmm. So here, the first segment is actually a first flight. So the proper flight you can take is going from LHR, so from London, from Terminal 2, and you have here the departure time and the date, to Lis. Lis is Lisbon. So you're going to do a first flight from London to Lisbon. You have the different information here. It's telling you the carrier code. So here it's TAP, uh, a Portuguese uh, airline. You have the information about the number, the aircraft number, operating duration. So this is the duration of this specific flight, where before you had the total duration of the trip. And the second flight from Lisbon to San Francisco. Okay? If you keep scrolling, you have the price, which is a very important information. So you can see the currency, you can see the total price. So here the flight from London to San Francisco is a bit less than 400 euros. It's actually quite a good price. You have the detail, if you have specific fees, uh, you can see if you want to check a bag, in, a bag in addition, it will be 75 euros. And you have uh, other information. Here we have only one traveler, so which is an adult, so it tells you the price. If we had more travelers with different ages, it could have told you, told you uh, the different price. So this is a flight offer. So let's say our customers, we display the list of flight offers and our users, someone wants to book this flight. So the second step, as I said, will be to use the flight offer price. Because the time we took to look at the, at the list of flights and selected the one we wanted, we want to make sure before doing the booking that the price is still accurate and the seat is still available. So if we take a look at here, this is all the, the flight offer price is built. It's actually a simple body that takes a list of flight offers. It can be one, it can be more if you're interested by more uh, flight to book. So the only thing you have to do is actually pass the list of flight offers you want to, uh, to price. So here I'm going to take the first one, the one we, we took a look at, and I'm just going to... Oh, let me... And I'm just going to here pass it. So I have, a, I have a, a list of flight offers, which in my case will be only one, and I just pass the content of the flight offer that I'm interested to price. That's all, nothing else. And I can call the API. So here the API is going to confirm the price. You can see here... I have no message telling me the price change, obviously, because for the purpose of the demo, I did it quite quickly. So the price didn't have time to change, but it could have been. And actually, just to show you how it works, I'm going to change the price just for the, for the demo. So I'm going to take the total price. I'm going to add 100 euro. And if I shoot the API now, you can see that I have a warning telling me, hey, the price changed. So what the flight uh, offers price API does is actually sending you back the response if you, here, the data with the uh, real price. So if I go, let me hide this. Here you can see is the, the normal price, not the one I changed before. So now you're ready. You validated, the flight is still available. The price is the one you, 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 you wanted, you know. So you're ready to book it. And the next step is actually booking it. So I go to the flight create orders API, which is the flight booking API. So this flight booking API, if we look at the body, it's a post as well, and it's made of two different things. It's made of the list of flight offers you want to book, so basically the list of flights, and it's made as a traveler's object. So basically at that moment when you book a flight, you need to specify the personal information of the travelers who's going to take that flight. So in this example, we're going to book the flight for only one traveler. Uh, you have here, it's Jorge, 
uh, you have information such as the date of birth, the name, the gender, the email address, phone number, and the document. Here, the passport number, which is required to be able to book the flight. So this is the first part. And the second part, once again, what I'm going to do is actually come back to the flight offers price. I'm going to copy the, the price that has been validated. So that contains all my information about my trip, which is still the one from London to Lisbon that will then do Lisbon, San Francisco. And I'm going to pass it to the flight crate order. And now I'm going to do booking. And it's done. I can see I have a 201, so it worked. It has been created. What do I have here? The first information is my booking ID. So this is the ID I'm going to save and I will be able to reuse later, for example, to retrieve my booking information using the flight order management API. You have some other information, such as the creation date. Um, here we have only one ID because we created, we booked only one flight. This is the personal name record, uh, known in the industry as a PNR number. Then here we repeated, uh, in case you wanted to save it, all the information about your flight offers and about the traveler and the link between the traveler and, uh, and the flight. And here you are. This is you have done a booking in a couple of minutes. So now the idea for you, obviously I showed you on Postman because I wanted to be able to explain in detail, but is to implement that you can use the different code samples we're providing and different SDKs to make your life easier and be able to implement the flow from search, price, and book. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at developers.amadeus.com. Always very happy to answer, and I hope this video will be useful for you. Bye.